Hello and welcome to this brief demonstration of Extras Auth, where I uh, kind of give you a high-level overview of how it works, how you may be able to extend it further for your own custom security needs, and uh, bas just basically how the default behavior works uh, when you integrate this with your own SSRS environment. Um, so the first kind of authentication that you can have is when you are a local connection. Uh, when that is the case, um, you're given administrator privileges and you can essentially do anything on the report server. And this is because if, you, uh, if you're able to be on a report server machine, you're usually an administrator anyway. Uh, so we're going to first debug what this scenario looks like when you try to authenticate. Uh, if I attempt to, for instance, uh, access localhost reports, and I'm not, or report server, either one, and I'm not yet authenticated, what's going to happen, if I was debugging, uh, what I first need to do is attach to the reporting services service, um, Windows service, which you can find here e more easily by just filtering by reporting or report. And this is the service we want to attach to. Once attached to this service, uh, clear our cookies to make sure we're not already authed. And let's try to access the report server. What happens is it's going to jump into this uh, page in it because we are attached to the reporting services process and it's going to recognize, hey, it's a local connection, go ahead, authenticate them, and make them the administrator SSR, SSRS user. So they can do anything. So if I continue along here, uh, by default, it does that. But if you go to the management interface, it's a, a little more clean. Uh, keep in mind, as you'll see with uh, external apps calling extras auth authentication, um, there won't be any. There, there is no temporary uh, blank page. It's just kind of a, a bug I need to work through. In any case, uh, so the uh, the next question is, how do things work when you're not local? When it's an external app trying to um, get some information from reporting services or otherwise communicate with a report server. Um, what needs to happen is the client app as well as the report server both need to have uh, a shared uh, symmetric encryption key. Um, I shouldn't say share, but they need to have the exact same symmetric encryption key in order, so in order that the client can encrypt the contents of a portion of its request, which is then decrypted on the report server side. Uh, this ensures that the uh, client calling report server is authenticated only if uh, they have the correct, um, the correct key and the encryption actually works. If it doesn't work, it's an unauthorized, um, it's an un unauthorized request and the client will continue to get 401 errors. Uh, so to demonstrate how that works, I'm first going to show you uh, where the key needs to go in uh, report server. It needs to go in web.config web and specifically uh, it needs to go in an app settings section. Uh, here I'm calling it clay, it could be key or whatever you want to name it. The important thing is that the key the key name or the key here and the key value here uh, both need to match um, what your calling application specifies for its encryption. Uh, so we have it set up on the report server. On the calling app side, uh, we can see it's getting this value as well, this clay value. Uh, it could be getting it from app settings uh, here. Uh, it, in my case, it's actually getting it from Azure Secrets. Um, you can also use AWS Secret Manager. It probably makes sense to keep important secure pieces of information you know, as secure as possible with, um, with the enhanced security measures you, you can get from the cloud these days. In any case, um, what ha what's going to happen here is when we try to call a report, it's going to go through this get report method and, and encrypt the query string portion of the report server request. And then on the report server side, it's going to then decrypt that encrypted uh, contents. So uh, let's debug this. If we want to run a report, 
it's going to first go through, take the URL of where we're trying to go, and encrypt it and put it in the query string. And then it's going to go to the report server to make sure we're still debugging the report server. And we're going to go where we need to go. We're going to set up a breakpoint there. Now, what's going to happen? Oops. What's going to happen? is things are going to work without even going to report server because we were already authenticated. So what we need to do is break authentication and I'll show you what it looks like uh, when you are authenticated. Essentially you contain, you have a SQL auth cookie in your, cook, in your browser cookies folder. Uh, but let's try this again. Uh, disabling the get report code, we already know what that's doing and trying to authenticate when we're not already off. And so what happens here is it's, it's calling from the application, but because I'm deb debu we're debugging this application locally, it's, uh, it's first recognizing that I'm a local user. And so it's gonna go ahead and give me the admin permission. So we can't, until I change something here briefly, we can't really test the external uh, external application calling code. Uh, so in order to, in order to test that for demonstrative purposes, I'm just going to flip this condition so that it always executes this else. And what we're going to need to do here now, and keep in mind, this is how you can make changes to extras auth and um, stop and restart uh, report server. Um, you need to do that in order so that when you build the project, the uh, DLL and the portable debugger file will get to de get deployed to report server in the bin, bin folder. So here I'm going to select stop report server, build the project. And once you build it successfully, you can see both of those files we need were copied. So we've updated things to have this temporary uh, logic switch so that we can debug this. So now what we need to do is start report server back up. Go back here and reattach to process, which will reattach to the reporting services service. Go back to our uh, external application that uses SSRS. And let's just say we want to run another report uh, initially, it looks like we are still authenticated. So now would be a good time to show everybody what, what it looks like when you're authenticated. Um, you're going to have a cookie called SQL auth cookie as shown right here. And to demonstrate the auth, what we're going to do is we're going to blow away that cookie. So the user is calling app is no longer authenticated. And we're going to do this again and say, uh, let's run a report for Northwestern down here. And if we run this now, it's going to jump into our extras auth code. And because I flipped this, it's going to say, I guess you're not a local person. You're an external calling app, uh, excuse me, app, an external calling app. And so I'm going to take your query string and try to decrypt it. And if it makes sense and nothing fails, if something does fail, it's not a secure request. It's not supposed to be authenticated. If everything uh, decrypts properly, I'm going to take you to that destination that you're trying to go to. And that's what the decrypted URL URI looks like uh, to continue on. Takes you to the report. And that's pretty much all there is to it. I um, I hope some people find this find this useful. Uh, I encourage people to contribute to the GitHub project. I'm more than happy to maintain it and um, answer uh, fix bug requests, answer any questions you might have. Put questions in the comments here or uh, go to the GitHub page. Uh, I'd really uh, be enthusiastic about working on this and collaborate on it collaborating on this with other people who are interested in .NET and reporting services and SQL Server. Um, I think I think despite the emergency of Power BI as a great ad hoc reporting tool, tool and kind of self-service, um, you know, software as a service, I think the use cases for reporting services 
they're very different and they're going to continue well into the future so uh, knowing knowing things like how to use extras auth to extend the custom authentication that Microsoft uh, kind of outlines uh, knowing how to extend the, the features and capabilities of SSRS in general I think will be more and more useful as companies realize you don't necessarily have to use reporting services in a Windows Active Directory environment. That was kind of its Achilles heel and what I think has been hamstringing it and holding it back for quite some time. Uh, so I, I hope you enjoyed this and thanks for your time.